Hello my friends, I'm Rick and this year's Seed Table. We got little Missy sitting over here in the corner and we are looking at Battletech's Historical Reunification War put out by a Star League source book from Catalyst. Now, I'll grant you, I had not been able to read through this thing cover to cover. I have read a good chunk of it though and uh, I have seen more than a few videos. Swin's got some crack videos that deal with these eras and you, you know the source book makes from great depth and detail but those videos really give you the overview of the era pretty well. It's one of the advantage or one of the interesting or fun facts for us older hats as players that were start playing Dungeons or I mean uh, uh, Battletech back in the, the late 80s uh, would be that there was such a depth of history going on there for Battletech in general that we did not uh, have any information on a lot of stuff that had come from before. There was a lot of mystery and unknown and there were entire epics, entire you know uh, uh, eras and eras is a good term for them that existed long before the 2025 era was uh, you know initiated for the game setting and uh, so to finally see decades and decades later a lot of really in-depth work going into flushing out those earlier eras is fantastic so everything you need here to run campaigns set in the reunification war era is right here in this book which is what the whole point of these kind of books are in the first place, in my opinion, anyway. And so there's a whole slew of good information in here uh, for the setting. It talks about the, 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 some of the, the conditions that led up to uh, the formation of the Star League itself, and then uh, how the Star League was this... this I, I don't I don't want I don't want really other than to say it was a, it was a bald faced lie from the get go the get go I mean the whole point was to bring all of humanity uh, under a peaceful banner and what did we do uh, you know the Star League goes on the rampage and then attacks the entire periphery who says uh, no thank you they quietly demurred and said no we're fine on we're fine how we are and and of course the Star League's like nah nah you're coming with us and of course that leads to the reunification war and many many you know lots of bloodshed and the sheer death and destruction is just staggering how much uh that later it's interesting because later supplements that that touched on the base of, of things like the historical parts of battle text in this case the reunification war uh was very vague in a lot of things and it was pretty clever that writers at the time uh, kept it vague uh, because they didn't have too many unanswered questions that could be nailed down. You know, so when they come back and they create an actual book that covers that era, I mean, it's really, it's really a good set of, uh, I don't want to say it was planning because they didn't plan it out that way, but it just kind of turned out. So we, we get a whole lot of information on that era and the various conflicts, various periphery house uh, uh, engagements or whatever you want to be involved in. And of course, a lot of uh, NPCs and PCs from the from the era. Uh, good source material when we look back and say who was doing this at that time, you know, and why. What was their mindset? Stuff like this. Then we get the various campaigns broken down: the Turian, the Magistry, the Outworlds, and and uh, you know, each one worse than uh, or more deadly than the others, depending on how you look at it. Rimworlds campaign. Still a lot of unanswered questions around that one world that I don't care for. And then, of course, one of the sections of all these books that I'm really interested in is I go back and I look at, uh, you know, rules annex and the additional rules that they've come up with and since then and if there's anything of interest that really pops out to me advanced uh, prototype and components which is ironic consider that what's considered advanced by most of the inner sphere for 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 centuries was considered a uh, uh, second hand by the by the the cutting edge of the, of the Star League, and it's not only it, and it's only after the invasion of the clans that we see a, a real renaissance in that technology. So that there's actually now some actual new technology that's making its way on the battlefield that's never been seen before. That's just an interesting thing. And then we get into, of course, the section where they add vehicles and mechs and things like this. I always enjoy these because they're trying to fill niches. Sometimes successfully and sometimes not so. So we got new Cambit, new uh, combat uh, tanks, and a cavalry tank, the Dragonfly variant, 
the B the TLS one B Telos uh, Turian design notable mech warriors L A L A one Alfar coming tree so this must be a Steiner mech of some sort yeah variant the T twelve Tiger medium tank. Oh, so now it's okay to use the term tiger, is that right? Because there was this big brouhaha about the Patton and the damn uh, Rommel. And I always thought that was BS. Total BS. It's a bloody tank. Mate, mate. Yes, he was a German officer. Who gives a shit? It is, who cares? It's in the future, for God's sake. The Gallant Urban Assault Tank. And the Wayland Mobile Base. I really enjoy seeing these things. I, I really like seeing these crop up because they go a long way to justify how certain things are done and how things tend to be over overwhelmed or overran, uh, you know, in in the inner sphere at the time, or I mean, uh, technology-wise. We we make a lot of logistics uh, assumptions that things are going to be this way and that's how we're going to do them, and or everything just comes out of the drop shell to the drop ship kind of stuff. And speaking of that, we got like bolt transport, the jumbo class drop ships, the Concordat frigate. I don't want, you know, that's what I hate about these these older systems. It gets crop up, and I keep getting crap popping up on my computer. Oh, you can get this updated, or this can you can do this for price. The new Citrus carrier, right? What is that? See exactly how many of these things you can carry. Housing inclusives excess of 2,000, almost half belong to these ships' aerospace group. This entire aerospace group, huh? Six full wings of aerospace fighters, a total of 120 ships, as well as four squadrons of small craft, typically a mix of shuttles, marine assault craft, and heavy escorts. That is definitely a carrier in the sense of the sense of the term carrier. Something that didn't have, we didn't really have a whole lot of when uh, some of the earlier uh, ship books that came out. And the Dreadnought class warship, right? Oh yeah. Once again, like I said, this was an awesome, uh, an awesome to read, and uh, definitely on my uh, short list to go back and 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 read some of the sections I missed out on for more depth. The uh, uh, this was a PDF, obviously, that was donated to the channel by one of you kind and uh, upstanding uh, subscribers who've been very generous and uh, very helpful. And I still have a bloody stack of these things sitting out there that I've already printed out, and some are bound and some are not bound, and we still have more to go. It just goes to show you how much stuff I missed out on, you know, for all those years that I wasn't buying anyway. Till next time, I'm Rick. A little Missy sitting over here in the corner. Hope you guys have yourself a, a great month of July, because this will definitely get posted sometime in the next.